What's going on everybody, this is Super Alex, and I wanted to try something new on my channel. WWE Extreme Rules was just yesterday, July 15, 2018, and it gave me the inspiration to try and put something new on my channel, like an Extreme Rules review. Like WWE pay-per-view reviews, it would be, I, I thought about that, and I'm like, I would love to do that, that'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool, I, I know what I'm talking about, so, <laughs> let's just talk about it, let's talk about it, um, so, let's just start right now, it's like, WWE Extreme Rules, July 15, 2018, it was, I would say overall, it was a pretty good show, overall, it was a pretty good show, yeah, I watched it last night with my friends, and we, we liked it, the first match we watched, um, we didn't watch the kickoff show, because we, we, we never watched the kickoff show, because we're just like, we just want to watch the show, so, uh, but I heard the the tables match between Sandy and New Day. I heard that was a fantastic match. I will have to go back and watch that so I can have like a better explanation on how I think about that match. But I heard Sanity was the victor by Eric Young slamming Kofi Kingston through a table. They showed it. Or they showed it later in the night, so that's how I know. And the first match we watched was the Raw Tag Team Champions Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt to destroy of worlds. Versus the B team, Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel, and I loved that match. It's like I lo I loved it. I loved it because how it ended. Because I never thought I would see the B team be tag team champions. I always thought they were in the Miz's shadow. They're, it's like they, they were just the two that was in the Miz's shadow. Like the Miz took all the glory, and they were just the supporting line. But no, they they proved that. They are a team to be reckoned with, and they are now the Raw Tag Team Champions, and that is fantastic. That is fantastic for their career. I think that's the first time since 2011 Curtis Axel has been a Tag Team Champion. I think he was Tag Team Champions with uh, Husky Harris, who Husky Harris is taking on the Bray Wyatt character, so it's just ironic. It's ironic, and plus what even made that match more ironic is that in real life, Bray Wyatt and Bo Dallas, they're actually brothers. They're actually biological brothers. If you don't believe me, look it up. The, ma the next match... What was the next match? Anyway, let's just talk, Let's just keep talking about the matches. Uh, the next match that I remember is Shinsuke Nakamura versus Jeff Hardy for the United States Championship. Now, Shinsuke was out... They were supposed to have this match a few weeks ago, but... Shinsuke was injured. Shinsuke was injured, so Jeff Hardy kept doing open challenges, U.S. open challenges, which, you know, is not bad. It keeps Jeff Hardy busy. But, you know, the thing I don't like about that match, the thing I didn't like about it was that literally uh, Jeff went out, Shinsuke went out, and then Shinsuke hit, hits freaking Hardy in the freaking where you're not supposed to hit, below the belt. He hits him right there. And then the bell rings, and then he does the King Shasa, and just beats Jeff Hardy for the title. I'm just like, are you joking? You you like leave because you're injured, and you you leave because you're injured, and then you come back, do two moves, and you win. That's exactly what Sting did to Jeff Hardy at Victory Road 2011, but that was for different different circumstances. That was for different circumstances, but. But I can see where Nakamura is coming from, but I mean, still, still, like, good lord, this heel Nakamura. I like Nakamura, I like Shinsuke Nakamura, I like him, this heel one, this heel one's pretty good, it's a pretty good heel, he he plays it off really well, he plays it off really well. And then, after that, uh, Randy Orton, uh, returning Randy Orton, returning Randy Orton, I love Randy Orton, love him. Randy Orton comes down, is like, stares down with Shinsuke, who's standing on the announce table at this time, and he turns his attention to Jeff Hardy and just stomps him below the belt, stomps him below the belt, and I'm just like, ooh, ooh, ooh that had to hurt, and it's like, that, that must, yeah, that did hurt, that did hurt, and what does this leave Orton with, it, I'm pretty sure he's gonna face Shinsuke eventually for the title, face Shinsuke for the United States Championship, but I think that was just, like, him getting back at uh, Jeff Hardy for taking his United States Championship, because Jeff Hardy is the one that beat Orton for it. I think. Yeah. I'll have to check on that. <laughs> I'll have to check on that. Don't quote me on that. Anyway, moving on now. 
Let's talk about the SmackDown Tag Team Championships between the Bludgeon Brothers and half a Team Hell No. Half, I say half because that was pretty much the entire match. It was just Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan and Luke Harper. But during the match, Kane came down and in like a boot, like one of those boots you put on whenever you have like a broken ankle or something or a broken foot or a broken leg or something like that. I've never had one on there personally, so I want to know how that feels to have one on there. But Kane had that on there, and he still came down. This is like shows the grit and, the grit and determination of Kane to come down there and help his team. Hell, no partner. That is great. That is really great. But I was like expecting like Team Hell to be a full force, like full 100 percent. And it's like you know what they they might have a match with the Bludgeon Brothers later, whenever they're all healed up. But I mean, gosh darn, I would I would love to see that. I would love to see. The team hell no become tag team champions. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's let's talk about the. Uh, let's talk about the uh, SmackDown Women's Championship. Women SmackDown Women's Championship. Asuka versus Carmella with James Ellsworth being suspended up above the ring in a shark cage. Now, uh, now. There was not a doubt in my mind that James Ellsworth was going to do something to interfere in this match. He had literally a chain in his pocket, and sent it out to Carmella, had literally had like a pepper spray bottle. Well, I think it was a pepper spray bottle. I assumed it was. Throw it down to Carmella. Nothing was used because, you know, the ref kept seeing it, and James Ellsworth is not the man of discretion. So... So, he starts picking the lock of the cage, and he's, like, hanging there. Like, really, James? Really? You're going to hang up upside down? So, that distracts Asuka, and then the whole thing happens, and then Carme Car eventually Carmella throws Asuka into the cage and hits her in the face. Uh, hits the... Asuka's face hits the shark cage, and she's out cold, and Carmella wins. Oh boy, I, I'm I'm liking these te these matches, but I mean, I don't like it when James Ellsworth gets involved. I do not like it when James Ellsworth gets involved. And y'all can disagree with me with what you want. I do not care what you say. James Ellsworth is stupid. Like he should not be getting involved. He shouldn't be getting involved. Just should not be. All right, ran over. Let's go on. Let's go on to the Raw Women's Championship. Now, I kind of enjoyed this one. This was the only Extreme Rules match. The Raw Women's Championship match was the only Extreme Rules match, which, I mean, like, it's not that bad having a Women's Extreme Rules match. It's not bad. It's not bad. I actually liked it. I actually liked it. Um, Ronda Rousey ended up uh, jumping over the barricade from her seat and... And beating on Mickey James and trying to get Alexa. I don't think she ever laid a hand on Alexa. No, she never did. But Alexa ended up uh, defeating Nia Jax, who was like out for like half the match because of Ronda Rousey. It's like, where are you? Where are you? It's like, where are you, Nia? Where are you? And then she comes back and then she gets pinned by Alexa Bliss. Yep. Yep. Anyway. I don't know, let's go on to the Bobby Lashley versus Roman Reigns. Bobby Lashley versus Roman Reigns. Now, I was under the impression that whoever wins this match would go on to face Lesnar, but due to his like whole ultimatum thing that he's dealing with, um, it's like there's an ultimatum where Brock Lesnar needs to show up to Raw tonight on the 16th or come to terms with his contract or he'll be stripped of the title. I wouldn't mind it if Brock was stripped of the title because he's making that Universal Championship useless, like worthless. They should have never, in my opinion, they should have never put Lesnar with that title. They only put him on there because he was the only one that could beat Goldberg. He was only on there because he was the only one that could beat Goldberg. And I, I knew as soon as I saw the matchup for WrestleMania 33, whenever... Was WrestleMania 33? Yes. When I saw the WrestleMania 33 thing, Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg, I was so mad because I because I literally saw that promo and I'm just like, you know what they're going to do? They're going to give Brock the they're going to give Brock the title and he's just going to hold on to it. 
He's just not going to defend it. He is not going to defend it because he is not a fighting champion. Brock Lesnar is the most fuck most paper champion there is. Like, I know Brock Lesnar. He's, like, a tough guy. Like, I'm not taking that away from him. Credit to Brock Lesnar for being a tough guy. But, I mean, if he is not defending his championship for the company that he works for, that pays him, then what's the point? What is the point in him having that damn championship? The best universal champion, in my opinion, was Kevin Owens, because he's the one who had an actual title reign. Out of the four champions that's been, Kevin Owens has literally had the best title reign because he's had the title reign, the full-time title reign. He gave it to Finn Balor, he had to relinquish because his arm broke. Gave it to Kevin Owens, had a great uh, conflict, had like a great rivalry with great wrestlers, superstars. Then you give it to Goldberg, who's also a part-timer. Then you give it to Lesnar, who's a major part-timer, who's off of WWE television for months and shows up at UFC 226, challenging the freaking world champion. Like, what are you doing, Lesnar? What are you doing? You're making that Universal Championship worthless and it is stupid. I hope that... Bobby Lashley won against La against Reigns and Lashley last night, which I am so glad because I do not want to see another Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns fight again. It'll just end up the same way in controversy with Reigns saying he's the undeclared, unofficial Universal Champion. And I'm so glad Lashley won because I would love to see Lashley versus Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. 2018, 2018 SummerSlam, I would love to see Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley, and whoever wins that match gets cashed in on a Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman is going to be the new Universal Champion, I'm calling it right now. Although, some people may have already called that, but I'm calling it right now, Braun Strowman is going to cash in. At SummerSlam, or sometime, sometime eventually within the next month, Brock, Braun Strowman is going to cash in and become Universal Champion. I would rather prefer Braun Strowman be Universal Champion because he's a full-timer. I don't like this part-time crap. Okay. Whew. Take a chill pill. Rant over about Brock Lesnar. Rant over about Brock Lesnar. I can go on all day about how much I do not like Brock Lesnar. All right. Let's go on to the main event match. Let's go on to the main event match. Uh... Dolph Ziggler versus Seth Rollins in an iron 30-minute Iron Man match with Drew McIntyre at his side for the Intercontinental Championship. Now, oh my God! Now I was like, like barely as barely awake whenever we were watching this match, and just like, oh my God, this is like guaranteed 30 minutes long. Like, oh wow! It's like okay, so it was actually a, it was a it was probably like the best match of the night. Dolph Ziggler versus Seth Rollins, best match of the night. I love Seth Rollins, and I love Dolph Ziggler, and I like Drew McIntyre. Three great competitors in this match, even though McIntyre was on the side, but he got involved. He got involved and got Seth his third fall. It's like, the thing I liked about it is, within the first third of the match, Seth had already brought it up to three to zero. Three to zero on Ziggler. I'm like, oh my god, he's like hitting this big lead. And then I'm just like, I'm thinking like, well, no, they got to do something to where Dolph gets ahead. So within two, within five minutes, Dolph gets three falls, and it's tied up. And then later on, he gets the fourth fall. So it's like four to three Ziggler. So as Seth is like looking up at the clock, he's like just checking the clock and everything that he does. Just looking up there, trying to figure out if he has more time. It's like he does, but he just doesn't get the job done, man. He doesn't get it. He doesn't get the pinfalls that he needs. And ah, man, I'm on the edge of my seat. We're on the edge of our seats watching this, and we're just like, we're just like, come on, Z come on, Seth, come on, Seth. It's like he's like pulling everything out of his arsenal to take out Ziggler. But the thing. But yeah, it's all the final moments was Dolph Ziggler going for a super kick. He goes for a super kick, but then Seth Rollins hits him with another super kick. Seth Rollins hits him with another super kick, but he doesn't cover him. He doesn't cover him. He's like on the other side of the ring, just like trying to crawl over to cover him. And as soon as he does, the clock runs out and the whole buzzer goes bang. Ah, and the ref can't continue the count because the match is over. Because the match is over and it ended in a draw at four to four.
Yeah, I forgot to say how I got that fourth fall. Yeah, Seth Rollins got a fall before then. <laughs> wow. It ended at like four to four, and so that happened. And then general manager, Raw general manager, Kurt Angle comes out and says that he doesn't want that match to end that way. So restart the match. So they're just gonna restart the match, and then come in Drew McIntyre again. I come come in Drew McIntyre again. Gets on the ropes. Uh, messes with Seth. Seth hits him with a knee, and then Ziggler hits him with a zigzag or famous sir. It was either the famous or the zigzag. I can't really remember. But he hits him with one of those moves, and he gets the pinfall, and Dolph Ziggler retains the Intercontinental Championship. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Which, I mean, like, I love that match. That was probably, like, the best match, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, that was my whole thing about the, uh... At WWE Extreme Rules pay-per-view from July 15, 2018. Uh, I may have missed a match. I I think I did somewhere. I think I missed a match somewhere. Um, if I did, just let me know down below. Just let me know down below. And I want to hear from you. What did you think? What did you all think um, about WWE Extreme Rules 2018? Like, did you have the same opinions that I have? Or did you think the same way I did? Or do you have something different? I don't know. I won't know unless you put it down there. I won't know unless you write it down. That's as simple as that. Yeah. So, I just wanted to try this new, try this something new, and just like, just to get out there. Just to get out there. Okay. So, I'm done blabbering, and done ranting over Brock Lesnar, who, I might just like put up a video of me just like ranting on how much I hate Brock Lesnar. Okay, so, anyway... Hope you all have a great evening, day, afternoon, whenever you watch this, or a great night if you watch. If you're one of those people that watch videos at midnight like me, it's like I watch videos at midnight or up until midnight. I go to sleep at midnight every single night. I need to stop doing that. But anyway, enough about me. Hope y'all have a great day.